Now, when you negotiate with an investor, uh, at least if it's a professional investor, you should really be aware that the valuation number you might talk about is only a small part of the big game. Um, Mark Andreessen uh, once said that uh, you determine the valuation, we, d we determine th the rest. So it's possible to make a contract and a term sheet such that you say, my value, my, the, com the value of my company is a, a gazillion dollars. You say, fine, it's a gazillion dollars. We totally accept that. Can we write the contract? And they write the contract in such a way that you end getting almost nothing and they end getting all the money. So there are so many different ways that, that you can tweak this. So you need to be aware of it and probably, or, or in most likelihood, you need a lawyer helping you um, and a lawyer who has been around who knows what's normal here. So it's a lawyer who has done this kind of transactions many times. Now we're going to talk about the term sheet, the horrible thing about the term sheet, because the term sheet can be dry reading and it's full of traps that uh, can be scary. Uh, but it's very important to take the term sheet serious because you might be very impressed by the top line valuation that your company get, but uh, in the term sheet there might be uh, clauses that mean that it ends up being completely different from what you thought. The first thing is um, if you have, um, especially if you have a different potential investors talking with you and then one steps forward and say okay we'd like to lead this round or do it alone uh, it's gonna uh, cost us money and so on uh, because we have to hire lawyers and spend a lot of time with experts evaluating your company that we want exclusivity for a certain period of time if they have good reputation they're serious people i wouldn't see any big problem in giving that There are a number of things that you might see that are not that easy to agree to or complicated. One of them is that they come and say, okay, so you, own you are the founder of the company, you own 10%, fine. The only thing is we want you to vest your shares. And you say, well, what does that mean, vest my shares? Oh, it means that you have to hand back the shares and then you get a new stock option so you start earning shares again. The reason we do that is that we're afraid you leave. And if you leave, we don't think there's any company. So we are investing in you, but we want to make sure that you are there. So we are not invested in something that collapses. The only thing is, if you do that, you have to have a clause that says if they then fire you, that you then keep the original shares you had, because otherwise you would have this horrible situation of, of, of building up the company, having these shares, you hand them back, then they fire you, and then suddenly you've got nothing. So that kind of protection should be acceptable to them. So that the different variations of that, there's also the situation where they say, we looked at who has shares here, and you allocated the shares some years back based on some assumptions, and it turns out it, it had developed differently. So now it looks like this person should have more shares and this person should have less. So we are not going to invest unless you rearrange that so it really reflect the reality that you have now. And very often that makes sense because an error has been made in the past so you, the investor demand that you correct for that. Then there's uh, almost always some clauses about voting. Um, the fund might want to have preferential voting so that their vote counts twice. And so whether you should accept that depends on, on, on how important they are and how important you are, this typical And you can uh, have a counter offer that says, for instance, that you want one board seat reserved to you, whatever happens, in perpetuity for the company because you put so much effort into it, it was your idea, um, you own shares in it and so on. This is something you might not want to use, but it's, it's a possibility and it can also be a counter offer when they more, want more votes. One of the most important terms that uh, professional investors very often put in is anti-dilution clauses. And this is relevant for the situation where you had, have a down round. 
So um, startup companies, uh, typical flow is every every um, financing rounds is uh, at a higher valuation, so higher share price. But sometimes it's at a lower price uh, if a business model doesn't uh, work the way it should, or if you have a big recession and everything is depressed. On average, maybe something like five to ten percent is down rounds, but probably closer to five than ten. Uh, but in recession, you can get up to 10 to 15 percent of down routes. So typically, professional investors will want some compensation in such a situation. So they want to have issued free shares or they want to have adjusted their share price back or something like that. So they, they, this comes in, in very strong forms or medium forms or weak forms. Strong form is called full racket. What you should accept uh, is always uh, up to ne negotiation. The strongest form where they get all their shares adjusted down might be very harsh, but some kind of adjustment downwards uh, can be relevant. So this is something that you should expect that there would be some of that and you probably need to accept some of that. There's something that you you very often see in term sheets, and that is uh, something about uh, liquidation preference. You typically have something called a waterfall, and that means that the money that can be shared is not shared e equally initially. Uh, and it can be, for instance, that the last investors, they have a clause that says that they, are, they have a preferential situation. So. If there's an exit and every, all the shareholders seem to be entitled to get some money, nobody gets any money until they, get their, they got their investment back twice. So, it, you know, so if the exit is made at two times the last valuation, everybody gets their money back twice. But if it's one and a half times, then these guys, they get uh, two times back, and that means that all the rest they get uh, less, and, and probably the first ones, because of other clauses down the waterfall, the first investors get nothing. So this is something you need to negotiate, and you need to go through scenarios, think about what if, what if, can this really hurt me? One term you see very often is that the last uh, investors, they want accrued dividends. So they say, we want uh, that there's a calculated dividend per year for us of so and so much. It's not paid out because the company is not in a position to pay out. But once there's an exit situation or one that, once there is a dividend payment, um, we get all the accrued dividends that have piled up over the years first before anybody else gets anything. Then we have drag alone rights, they are very important. So let's say that somebody comes and, and offers to buy your company for $500 million. That's probably great. Um, then the venture capital, uh, they put in a, a, a right that they say, okay, if we accept to sell at that, we want to force all the other shareholders to also sell because you cannot, you cannot sell the company if there are some holdouts that don't want to sell the shares. So in that way, you force everybody to, to, uh, to agree to such a, a deal. And a parallel kind of clause is that some person wants to sell shares to a third party, just you know, not the company, but some shares. And these rights say that if you sell your shares to somebody else, then anybody else had the right to take part in that sales and get a proportional part of that sale. So what we have here is that you get a term sheet that has a lot of clauses. Some of them might make you angry because they seem so aggressive un or unexpected. But before you act angry and respond, I really recommend that you talk with a lawyer who's been doing exactly this kind of business many times, who can tell you whether this is unusual or this is the way it's done. If it's the way it's done, then the only thing is to, to get a sense of, is it tweaked a little bit too far to this side or is it tweaked pretty far to my side and does it reflect the power position here? If I have the hardest company in the world, I don't want to accept much. If I have a, a kind of weak situation, I, I have to accept more. 
you need some guidance for somebody who has been around to tell you what is your position and how fast should you go. Do you speak future?